Hey, Mark Spencer here from RippleTraining.com and AppleMotion.net with a quick motion tip about rasterization and pre-comping in 3D projects. I had somebody uh, iChat me a really interesting question on a project they had with having a problem, and this is a very common thing that can come up when you're working in 3D projects. And I took their project and modified it a little bit to show you an example here. So I'm going to play here so you can see what's going on. We've got this brown card here that says first on it. It swings into view. And then the second card that swings into view that's blue. But the problem is, as you can see, that after the brown card swings away, unfortunately, we can still see it. I'll stop playback right there. We still see it. We shouldn't. It's behind this second blue card. If I go to top view, and there's the camera, and I'll go back to the beginning. And as I play forward, you will see this top card here, back here, swing into view. So there it goes. It's in front now. In fact, even if we go to a perspective view, you'll see that this brown card is behind the second blue card. But if I go back to the active camera view, we can see the brown card through the blue card. And the blue card's opacity, if I open up the second group and select that blue card and go to the shape tab, we can see that its fill opacity is 100%. So we shouldn't be seeing anything through it. So what's going on? Now this will happen to you sometimes, and here's what you need to look for. Either on the group, uh, and before I even mention that, the, you want to make sure you have 3D groups, which you do. We have this little stacked icon. If you click the little icon right here, it will no longer be a 3D group. It'll switch to a 2D group. But these are 3D groups, which means that the layer stacking order here doesn't determine where they show up in Z space. What determines it is their actual Z position. So the stacking order shouldn't matter. But if I take that first layer and hit Command left bracket to move it back, it does matter. See that? The, the first, the brown card, now actually is hidden by the blue card. So, uh, but that doesn't solve our problem. If I leave it back there, if I move back in time, we're going to have the same problem uh, earlier on. So uh, changing the layer order of the groups doesn't solve the problem. What you need to do is look on the groups or inside the groups, and one of them will probably have a little box around it. See this box around our text group? That's the problem. That means that this text is being rasterized or pre-comped or pre-composed so that now that that text is being composited in layer order rather in z-depth order. So what can cause that? There's a couple things. Certain filters will cause it. Certain behaviors will cause it. Um, opacity changes and blend modes can cause this. But there's usually a fix. So what I'm going to do is select this text layer. And what we want to do is find the parameter that's causing the issue. And Motion helps you with this a little bit. If I go to the Properties tab, you'll notice there's a little blue LED dot right there. That's what's telling me, hey, this parameter is causing the pre-comp or the rasterization. So if I bring its opacity back to 100%, the blue dot goes away. And you can see the opacity is 100% there. Let's move our playhead back to where the other one was, right there. And now we've got the same problem with the second group. Let's go in here, select that text layer. And once again, we've got the blue LED dot for opacity. So I'll drag it up to 100%. Boom. And all of, a second, all of a sudden now, everything's fine. The brown card no longer shows up behind the blue card. Let's play it through. Brown card plays, flips around, and everything's beautiful. OK. Great. However, the nice thing about that opacity change was it, it enabled us to have the uh, text look a little darker, right? It was partially transparent. In this particular instance, one solution would simply to change the color of that text to make it a little bit darker, uh, both the outline and the, and the fill. So that would be one way to solve the problem. But maybe you really do want it transparent. So how can you affect the transparency of a text layer without forcing this rasterization? Well, that's the point of this little exercise here is you don't do it on the Properties tab where you have the opacity that affects the opacity of any layer. For text, you can go to the Text tab and then go to the Style section. Now, there's a face opacity and an outline opacity. So you can reduce the face opacity to maybe 25% and reduce the outline opacity to maybe 25%. And in fact, in this case, I might even turn the outline off and just go with the face. So in that way, I've reduced the opacity. It's partially transparent now. So if I had background elements, uh, actually, this is on a fully opaque background here, but I could reduce the opacity of the card as well. And then you could start to see through and see the other elements that are seen. 
So there is a way around most of these issues of pre-comping or rasterization. It's simply a matter of finding what's causing it and then using another method to achieve your result. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, I'm Mark Spencer from Ripple Training and AppleMotion.net, and thanks for watching.